Hi, I'm Emily, the lead 3D artist here at CSN. I'm going to show you how to turn something like this into something like this using CSN's Image to 3D AI. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to the CSN website. And you can either sign in if you already have an account, or you can sign up quickly using your Google account or your Discord. Once you're in, you're going to want to hit the Upload Image button. You're going to decide if you want to use 1.01 1 .01 or 2. You make sure the automatic is checked. You're going to hit the upload image and you're going to find the image you're wanting to generate in your file. Once it's done uploading, you're going to see that's in the uh, training preview. You'll have your 3D mesh here in a bit. You're going to want to upload a portrait and a body separately. This will give you the most detail in the face and that will be very important moving forward. Once your meshes have been generated, you just go and click the download button. You can just download the OBJ of this one. After everything is in your liking, if not, you can always try again or try a different image. Once you have the meshes downloaded, just toss them into Blender. We are primarily using Blender today. Um, I like to even them out on the axis, so I'll pull them right above the axis and I will reposition them correctly. Um, I'll scale them up or down, and then I will also smooth out the meshes. Just an easy right click and smooth mesh. So for the first step, I use the texture from the generated AI mesh as a kind of template or stencil in order to get the correct proportions and things like that on my mesh, I just sculpted them using the sculpt mode in Blender. The stage should be very rough. Don't worry about anything looking good. Just get the right proportions down and you'll be okay. So here I'm kind of showing you what I'm talking about. So I'll go into sculpt mode. I'll use the basic draw brush and I'll just kind of roughly go over where the eyes, the nose, the lips, any form that is needs to be more defined. Um, I'll roughly do this just to get a good idea of what the proportions are on the mesh. Um, don't go crazy into detail. Again, this is more so just the block out. As you can see around this stage, I'm very focused on the eyes because the eyes are important. I'm doing a rough eye socket, kind of pushing the eyes inward where the eyeball would be. You can do this by using the same brush. Just hold down control while using the brush and every brush does the opposite uh, when you press control. So once you have a mesh with roughed out sculpted proportions, we're going to add the eyelids and the eyeballs in order to get better proportions and to see things properly. So I made a really rough demo of how you could possibly make eyelids uh, and eyeballs pretty quick. Um, you can see I selected the UV sphere and I am going to delete the faces of where I think the the corner of the eyes are going to meet each other. Um, you're going to want to delete these faces so you have an opening for the eyelid. Um, and then after this, we're going to position it on your avatar. As you can see, I'm just repositioning it, rotating it. Um, so resizing it in order to make it look a bit more natural on your character. Again, this is really rough, so of course when you're doing it, make sure you're very thorough and it matches up to the proportion of your character. When you're doing this, make sure that your face is done pretty much with the proportions and things. You don't need the texture anymore because after this we are going to remesh this uh, face with the eyeballs and the texture will not be there anymore for you to go back as a reference. So for the eyeballs, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add a UV spear. Um, this time we're not going to cut it because it needs to be completely circle for the eyeball, uh, especially for animation. You want a full set eyeball so it can rotate a full 360, 90, whatever. Um, yeah, you can see I'm resizing it in order to fit the face naturally. Of course, this is another rough example. Uh, just make sure it looks natural to your character and their proportions.
So once you have the eyelid in a decent place, you're going to go over to the modifiers tab and you're going to find the solidify option. Once you click that, you can see that it's already taken some sort of form. You can make it thicker, thinner. Um, you're not going to apply it just yet. You can go into the sculpt mode or you can alter the actual vertices to make it look more like a curved eyelid. Um, just anything that you think would make it look more natural. Every time you do this, you need to make sure things look natural to whatever avatar you're working on. Once you have what you like, you're going to duplicate it and take it over to the other side. Um, you're going to apply the modifier, the solidify modifiers on both eyelids, and then you're going to join the eyelids onto the head. Uh, go into sculpt mode, and this is where we are going to remesh them. Um, this will physically join the eyelids and the head and make them just one single mesh together. Next thing you're going to want to do is work on the body. I used a ready mesh from Blender as a guide and reference. Um, I then sculpted more in detail of the body and the head. I didn't go to an extreme amount because they are again going to be remeshed. So the next thing is similar to the eyelids. We're going to overlay the head um, on the body, make sure it's sized and in the correct location to where it would look natural on the avatar. Uh, you don't want an off proportion head to do that. Um, you want it to look natural, as natural as possible, like the head was always attached to the body. As you can see, I'm repositioning it, uh, resizing it to kind of match the uh, head that was on the body originally. Uh, just in proportion and location, I um, want this to look pretty natural. So the next thing you want to do is go into sculpt mode, um, select the body, uh, select the smooth tool, turn the intensity all the way up, and as you can see I'm smoothing the parts that I do not want to see inside the, uh, and the head. Um, I don't want to use these parts, so whenever I do remesh, these parts are not going to be visible or existing. Um, so I will get rid of certain areas that I don't want to see. That includes on the portrait as well. I'll smooth in some parts like that to match it up. Um, the goal is to just match things up, um, make it look natural, remove parts that you don't want to use because when remeshing, it will disappear. All right, to remesh this, you're going to press R. This will give you the density of the mesh option. So you can just move your mouse forward and backwards. Um, once you like the density, you'll just press Control R and this will remesh the mesh. Once you remeshed it, you're going to want to keep sculpting, get the extremely high detailed, as high detailed as you want or as you need. Um, this will be your high poly mesh. Um, but yeah, it should look something like this with eye sockets. So the biggest thing you want to do next is do the retopology. Um, you can do it in multiple different engines. Um, I tried it in ZBrush, but overall I like doing it manually. It gives me better control. Um, and you can do that right in Blender. So to do it in Blender, you're going to want to use this add-on called B Surface. Uh, to find it, you're going to go to Preferences. Um, then you're going to go to add-ons, um, you're going to type in B surface, uh, and you should see it pop up. You're going to want to check the box if it's not already checked, um, and then you can just exit this out and go back to your file. But you should see it pop up on the side as B surfaces. Uh, so here's a quick demo of what B surfaces is all about. It's a really quick and easy to understand retopology tool in Blender. Uh, you can select edges and extrude it. Uh, you get an additional quad. Um, you can have them mirrored on each side, which is really cool. So if you have a even avatar or if you want to even out your avatar, uh, you only have to do half of the work. Um, you can, there's different options under the B services tab. Uh, 
you can change the the color you can make it come in front or behind the mesh that you're retopologizing um, there's also an option to draw on quads which is really cool for quad flow um, which is helpful for meshes that need to be animated uh, just click add surfaces and it'll pop on directly onto your mesh um, this is a super helpful tool uh, really easy to use and makes retopologizing super simple also you can use the merge vertice uh, this is really helpful if you want to quickly merge the vertices between like the drawn quads or if you need to just attach the quads. It's super quick. You just layer over the vertices and it attaches immediately. The topology and edge flow of animations are very important, especially if you are doing a face animation. Um, you can kind of get away with things when you're just doing the body animation, um, but you'll definitely see the weird deformity and stretching and pulling if you don't have the correct edge flow on the avatar. So one of the main things that uh, you need to do right after you finish uh, retopologizing your avatar is you need to add a mouth cavity. This is only necessary if you're doing a animation for the face. Um, I'm showing you what it would look like on your character. It should go inward through the mouth. This will be the cavity that holds the teeth, the tongue, things like that uh, inside your character. Uh, it's kind of like if you think about it, like just like the gum area of your character's mouth. One thing you will have to make is the, uh, the teeth and the tongue of your character. It's really easy to make. Um, it doesn't take very long at all. One of the last things I did was uh, create like underwear or shorts for my character. I didn't want her going naked. Um, so to do that, I made a super quick, rough uh, demo on how to do that. You're going to select your character, go into sculpt mode. You're going to scroll down until you see the button that's called mask. You're going to want to use that brush. Um, this is going to mask out a certain area of your character. You're going to make sure your intensity is at 100 or 1. Um, you're going to then draw on the character. Kind of make a outline of what you think the clothes would look like so i'm currently making an outline for some shorts this is what i imagine they would look like um so we're going to roughly do that make sure you don't miss any spots So in order to turn this mask into an actual mesh, you're going to go under mesh, go to extract mesh. You're just going to press the OK. The default is fine. You're going to see that's going to turn it to a separate mesh than the avatar. This is what we want. Um, if you go into modifiers, you can see you added um, a modifier. Make sure you apply this later. Um, we're going to go to sculpting. We're going to click the inflate tool. Um, we're going to inflate it so it's it looks like she's wearing it, it'll go right above the skin. You can see I'm going all around, getting anywhere where I see the mesh and the shorts going through each other. I'll slightly smooth out the edges to make them look a bit more crisp, um, and then I'll go back to the inflate tool and inflate them again. Um, this is a great trick to make quick clothes. Um, super easy and fast. So you can make a bra too, the same way. Uh, your avatar should look something like this. You can add little special things. I added eyebrows and some eyelashes to her face. Um, but yeah, uh, in the next video, we should I'll talk about how to properly rig her body and her body and face if you're doing both the animation for body and face. Thank you for watching.